Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Matches. This is designed by Daniel McKinley and it is published by Thing 12 Games. This is kind of a trick-taking game, kind of a card-shedding game in a way. Um, I don't know about you, but I was always told as a kid not to play with fire, not to play with matches. Yeah, you know, I think that's a thing. We've told our children not to do that, but, okay. Hold on, before we talk about this. You know what is really fun though? When you like light a candle and then you blow the candle out and there's all that wax. And did you ever do this as a kid where you dipped your fingers in? I always wanted like... to, my parents wouldn't let me. What? Uh, I was just too dangerous. Well, I mean. <laughs> I played with a lot of fireworks. That was our dangerous hot thing. Wax. <laughs> it's not, you played with fireworks, but you couldn't play with candle wax. I think there's some disparity there that needs to happen. I also taught our girls about how fire, like, is fire. And I remember I had a... You taught the girls that fire is fire? <laughs> I taught the girls that fire is we fire. We are great parents. <laughs> no, I had... Girls got the round. Fire, fire is fire. <laughs> I had, like, um, you know how if you have long hair, I don't know if you know this, but if you have long, have long hair, hair, you shed all the time. And so I took one of my hairs and I showed them on a little candle. This is what happens when your hair gets in fire and it goes... So stay away from the fire, girls. And it would have worked, but now they're just too curious. And they're like, do my hair. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <Do my> hair. <laughs> yeah, that's what this game is about, burning hair. <laughs> No, this is a, okay, again, it's a, kind of a trick-taking-ish game, a card shedding game, where you're trying to stay in the round as long as possible uh, is until you burn out. Burning out is what you're trying to avoid happening. Uh, when that happens, the round ends. Uh, so let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here's our set for matches. We have our bag full of these fire tokens over here. Basically, the yellow fire tokens are worth one point each. The red fire tokens are worth five point each. We also have our deck of cards over here. We're going to shuffle that up at the beginning of the round, and we're going to get 10 cards each, or if we're playing a, a six-player game, we're going to get nine cards each. Then we're going to give the first player token to the most recent player who has gotten burned. All right, let's go ahead and say that is us. Uh, what we're going to do at the beginning of the game, we're also going to set aside four of these tokens. Those are basically going to be uh, kind of a round-end thing, kind of a round counter. Also going to be a little bit of a catch-up mechanism, giving points to the people who go out first each round. So we're going to go ahead and look at our hand, and basically we're going to try to figure out what kind of combinations we can come up with the most often. Looks like we've got a whole bunch of sixes. Uh, we've got some ways that we can count up to six as well. So we're going to go ahead and choose six. Six is going to be our starting card this round. We're going to put it out there in the middle of the table. That's what all of us are going to try to get to. We're also going to seed it with one point. And then every time someone else plays a matching six, it's going to keep on adding to that score that we're all trying to gain. All right, so let's say it's our turn again. Let's go ahead and place one of our sixes down. That means we're going to add another gem to the card. We've got another six. That's fantastic. We're going to keep on adding gems to that card. What we're trying to do is we're trying to keep on going and survive as long as possible so we're the most likely person to stay in. We also have cards like this. This is a flare card that kind of acts like a wild. So because it acts like a wild, it itself can also be a six, in which case we add a gem to it. We can also play by playing other cards down as well. So for instance, if we did two threes, that would equal six. That would also allow us to survive the round. However, we would not add a gem to the pile. And the last thing you can really do is you can also play cards uh, upside down to count as a one. So for instance, here we have a total of five cards we just played, or a five. If we played an upside down value, that would also count as a one and allow us to play this as a total of six. At the end of the round, if we were the person who lasted the longest, we're going to get all of these gems that were on that card, and that's going to be our points for the round. However, if we had got knocked out earlier, what we would do instead is we would go through our pile, and we would count up all the pairs that we have, and we would gain one gem from the pile for each pair. So let's say we had a pair of sixes here, and we had a pair of threes over here, that would allow us to take two gems from the pile. The player who burnt out, or kind of got kicked out of the round the earliest, they're actually going to get the leader token, as well as be able to take one of the gems from the starting pile over here at the beginning of the game, and they're going to be the first player for the next round. It's kind of a catch-up mechanism, a way to get to some points and some control over the next round. The game is going to last a total of four rounds, and whoever has the most points at the end of the four rounds is declared the winner. There's another optional way to play, which includes these burn cards. These burn cards are kind of like rule-breaking things. Essentially, if you're playing with these, what you'll do at the beginning of the game is you'll set up kind of a marketplace of them, uh, costing one, two, three, and four gems, uh, based on how you lay them out. And they're basically ways that you can kind of break the rules, give you some extra opportunities to gain some gems. This particular one says is Wildfire. This card counts as a flare card, one of those wilds, you know, and maybe played instead of playing cards from your hand this round. That can be really strong. Remember we have one like this. This is a golden map. 
match. This says all players must place two of their f uh, fire tokens on the blaze. Uh, one, if that's all they have. So the blaze is that starting card there. So they basically have to take gems they've already earned, put them back onto the pile, and have to re-earn them again later. That can be a really crazy way to distribute the wealth amongst the players. Playing with the burn cards is a lot more chaotic, but can also add to the fun level if your game group likes playing with those more aggressive cards like that. The production quality on this game is really top notch. I liked the box. I like how it had that like cabinet, like a like a box of matches. Yeah. yeah. So I really liked that. And then the cards are really glossy. They have a great finish on them. It's just the production quality for just a card game was really good. I think the more closely that you get to a number, the more fun it is, the more better it's going to be for you. Uh, so if you, you know, let's say eight was the burnt card, or you want to play as many eights as you can, every time you do that, you're adding more and more of the fire yeah. tokens to that card in order to make that round worth more and more points. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you can get eight other ways by combining other cards or whatever the case is. Uh, but ideally, that's what you want to place. And in that way, it gives the first player a lot of control. They have a lot of, you know, they're able to call out what they think is going to be the best thing for them yeah. at the start of the round. Um, but granted, they have one less card in their hand, but that's okay because they know that they're going to be able to use the duplicates they have in their hand. And also, it's, it's kind of a first player balance thing. It's not yeah. like they have complete, they, they have more control, but then everyone else starts off with fire tokens to kind of balance that out. Yeah. Um, there are also these burn cards that you can play with. So there's special abilities and ways to break the rules, um, but you have to use your own points in order to utilize them. So there is a way to change the game or make it just a little bit more spicy, but you have to sacrifice your own points to do that. Muy caliente. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, this game is extremely easy to teach. It's very, very clear. The rules are very, very clear. It's almost like you could use this game as kind of an introduction to a card shedding game, you know, as, as far as, um, um, so you, you play this card, or you can buy this combination of cards, or you can do this combination of cards. There's all different ways that you can play on your turn in order to get rid of cards. But the fewer cards you use, the more likely you're going to be able to stick around until the end of the round and, and outlast everyone that's going to burn out inevitably, or try to get those pairs. You know how it is. The rest of the case is. So it's, it's a very simple game, easy to teach. I think anybody could play this game. That being said, it did... Sometimes that simplicity is a good thing in terms of in teaching, which it definitely was here. But that also meant that there was not a lot of decisions to be made. Uh, on your turn, you're basically trying to match up as best you can to that thing. And if you can't, you can't. And the, the decisions were were very thin, if any, presented yeah. themselves. The first player, they had the most amount of options on their turn was when they're choosing. That determines the whole rest of the round. Um, so not a lot of choices here. Yeah, this game was um, fine. I had a fine time playing it, but at the end of the day, it's it's forgettable. I I don't know if I'm gonna remember this game in three, four, five, six months. I probably won't even remember until like I'm looking at our own channel. I'll be like, hey, we talked about this game. Like it's. Or you see a book of matches. Somewhere. I see a book. I won't. I don't even think I'll connect it then. <laughs> it's just. It's not even that the game's bad because it's not. It's just very forgettable. I'm not going to remember this game at all. Yeah, it's a simple game. It's a fun game. Check it out if that sounds interesting to you, something that you can introduce to your family on a quick card setting game. But otherwise, this is what is a pass for us. Yeah. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.